Okay guys, what I have for you here is a step-by-step -step instruction manual on how to completely demolish a Gab of Rohan game. The first step, unconventionally, is to forget that you have FAF open and let the game start without you. That is critical because then the rest of the players in the game will totally underestimate you and just assume that you don't exist. This gives you the tremendous advantage of instantaneous surprise. The second thing that you need to do is stop halfway through your land factory to further lower your score and then build an air factory instead. This will allow you to only be able to build three mass extractors instead of four so that you can build your hydro on time and not power stall. In the meantime, you can let the rest of the useless chumps in your game run towards the center to fling projectiles at each other and possibly kill one another, but that is none of your concern because you're ecoing. And, of course, hydro first, more power. Everyone loves and needs power. As you can see, it is critical to take the chance that everyone else will do the same thing and build land factories. Alright, the next step in your domination of the map is to forget that you have four mass extractors in your spawn. No one needs too much mass, although somehow in the meantime your score has apparently risen beyond everyone else's for unexplained reasons. I don't know. <laughs> uh, you need to throw everything you have into this single air factory because you need a transport which you forget to build and you just sit there idling until you finally remember to hit the build key once you have a transport in your possession you might want to check and make sure that no one is dying on the southern side because that might be bad for you and then you can calmly pick up all of your build power and send it across the map while assisting your only factory with your ACU. Because ACU and two engineers is definitely all that you need to expand. No one needs more than that. I mean, building more engineers is just wasted mass because engineers don't do anything. Everyone knows that. Always be sure to fly around the radar. Don't fly over the radar because that gives away your sneak attack. Also a good idea to stockpile T1 stockpile T1 bombers on the offside chance that you should completely fail because then you won't have something to assist you on your suicide mission. Hopefully, if everything else has taken place as it should, you can drop your T1 engineers off in the enemy's base where you immediately try to queue up land factories, but since all of the land is rough around you, you fail multiple times. Losing time and allowing your opponent to start building a couple of combat units but it's okay because Seraphim Artie is amazing and in the meantime as we can see the general boring slugfest is continuing in the center because you know everyone goes to the center why not there, there's arrows on both sides of the screen pointing to the center that means you go there right well not necessarily because Hey, you can kill things with units that are not in the pass. I, I, I don't know why people don't realize this, but, you know, it, it works. And hey, this provides a really awesome distraction for your T1 bombers. And there they go. Now, I forgot at the beginning of the match, this is where you have to do a psychoanalysis of the enemy team. The enemy team has two 1900 players. What you need to do is you need to get across from the one that is the most drunk. That way, his reaction time is slower and you will be able to kill him with incredibly stupid means, thus causing an insane amount of rage. Here we see Megatron. I should be playing this while less drunk and Protoculture will subsequently <laughs> lose his crap and commence to self-destruct. Now, Gap of Rohan games always need to be played, no share, so that when this happens, you have free reign on just steamrolling multiple bases with your small T1 army. 
And as you can tell, nobody needs teching. Why on earth would you upgrade mass extractors when you could just build more units? It's the key to success, more tanks. <laughs> and so as they watch their bases crumble under the fire of T1 units, they waste APM arguing with each other instead of actually fighting you. And this also forces a withdrawal of the ACUs from the front line because they're losing their things. They're pretty little things. And at some point, as I have done here, you do want to switch to engineers so that you can build new things and reclaim things. Because that is how you float the eco that you need to finally get this T2 upgrade on your air factory even though you have no build power because you have one engineer building factories really far away from your air you don't ever want to put your build power too close together because then it's more susceptible to tack missiles because we all know that when you're doing a build like this the enemy players will have tack missiles and the lovely little zooies are going to steamroll everything killing pgens, mechs, and point defense alike with impunity. Although you will want to key up a little more anti-air than normal in your unit mix because T1 bombers, that's why. <laughs> oh, And then to add insult to injury, the T2 bomber snipe is always, always a good idea. There is never a wrong time for a T2 bomber snipe. Especially when you have ACUs pushing into your units and losing health. Go ahead and bump this up a little bit so we can burn off some more of this ridiculous game. You want to make sure that you have more than enough bombers to kill someone before you go for the first trip. Also, you want to clump your units, not stream them through all at once, because that increases their effectiveness. Now the problem is, when you don't scout, because if you don't scout, you don't realize how many interceptors he has until you're already going. And then he kills all of your bombers. Now here is another key to the psychological dominance of the enemy team. Once you get them making statements about how awesome they are for dodging all of your bombers, you know that you have them because then they're going to get overconfident and start building in place and ignoring what is going on around them. That way, the next time you push your units, he stands in one spot for way too long, allowing your units to come in and envelope him and the bombers pop him. <laughs> and nice dodging, bro. So amazing. I'm gonna bump the speed down on this, losing some frame rate, getting a little bottleneck. For those of you who are wondering, I am waiting on new thermal paste for my CPU so that I can overclock it again and take full advantage of my graphics card. And there's the game. Three out of four players dying to T1 spam and bombers and the fourth suiciding into a galactic colossus because life is not worth living when your whole world is crumbling around you due to the effects of Zooey spam. Alright guys, that is it for the tutorial. If you want to win every Gap of Rohan game, the key is to play like crap and not go to the center. There you have it.